Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another live stream here at my YouTube channel. I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, today, I'm going to be doing some mail art. I haven't done mail art in a long, long time. I just haven't like had the gumption to do any and oh, gosh, it seems like months. I think I did share an envelope um, that I had made for Tim Holtz, which I still need to mail. But um, I shared that on Instagram, but it, there wasn't a video for it or anything. So I thought I'd just come on here and we're going to make a really simple envelope today. So I'm going to start out by prepping my envelope surface. So I've got some Bristol paper here. This is a Bristol Smooth Surface. I've actually got, looks like I've got one that's already out of the pad. So we have our eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter Bristol paper. And we're going to use the one, two, three punch board from We Are Memory Keepers. Um, I, they still sell this punch board, but it is not this gray color. It's like a white color, um, but they do still sell it. And I prefer this punch board over the regular envelope punch board because of what I just did, this swing out arm. When you're doing larger envelopes, you need the swing out arm because you're, the cardstock is going to go past the edge of the board. So um, if you plan to do anything larger than an A2 envelope, or I should say an envelope that fits an A2 card, you're going to want the one, two, three punch board. And I literally, I have never made anything else on this except for an envelope, but you can make boxes and bows as well. So if you're interested in something like that. All right, I'm going to take out my little bone folder that's off to the side. <clears throat> and on this little guide over here, I'm not going to zoom in for you, but for my A2 card, it says that I need to uh, score or punch at three and five eighths. So I'm just going to come over to three and five eighths. And I like that they have everything measured down to the eighth. So three and five eighths right here. I'll punch. And then I'm going to use the lower groove right here. And it just goes all the way up and into that punch. Okay, so then I'm going to rotate and I'm going to feel, you can kind of see where that score line is. I'm going to feel for when, when it falls into this groove. You can see how it says envelope score groove. It's going to go right there. I'm going to feel for where it kind of puzzle pieces in and I can punch and then score again. So for those who don't like to try to find where that score line kind of falls into the groove. After you've done it once, you can just take note of the measurements up here and then just always do those two measurements. Some people, you know, prefer that. All right, so I'm gonna rotate, punch, and then score. And then rotate once more, feel for where it hits that groove. All right, so I'm going to grab someone's address from my mail art spreadsheet, which has not had enough love over the last few months. So if any of you want me to use your address, it will be shown in this live stream on this video, but if you want your address thrown into the uh, ring for to possibly have it used on this envelope, and hopefully I will mail it to you someday <laughs> because I'm so bad on mailing out cards. But if you are, go hit that link down in the video description that says like submit your address for mail art. I'm going to go pick out someone's address here in a little bit and uh, we're going to, you're going to want to know, you know, if it's yours, focus on the art. Okay. So once again, this is the birds and twigs stencil from, looks like the artist is Janine, but it's from studio light. Um, Janine's mindful art collection essentials. I got this over at Simus to stamp.com. It's a really big stencil. Okay. Now I've got to figure out what I'm doing. These are the four colors I'm really feeling. And I'm going to grab some blender brushes. Ta-da! All right, here we go. So I'm going to have to do some masking just because this stencil isn't large enough to like cover all of the paper. So I'm going to take this two inch wide masking tape and I'm going to mask off everywhere around this. 
I think I'm going to do like this section from like, you said there's kind of like a line right there that ends. I'm just going to do that section. Let me get a little bit of masking tape here to tape down my stencil. You know what, we're, we're going to use those post-its. Why not? Because I want to like come in and mask off some of these areas. And it might just be a little easier to... So I'm going to have kind of like this line going up and I'll just get that spot right there. Okay. Yeah, I think I do still want that, those little spots right there. And I'm just going to start blending. And I want it to be fairly dark, so I'm really getting in there. Alright, I'm going to switch to the next color, which is Pear Affection. It's a little bit of a darker green. It's not really showing much of a color difference there, but that's okay. The next color will be a big difference. Alright, and then we're going to switch to Aegean. And I think I'm still going to use my green blender brush. Oh yeah, there we go. That's where we're getting some color, some color difference. And then let's see, I'm going to switch to my last color, which is ocean. So I'll switch to my blue blender brush because this is much more of a blue shade. We'll just get this from the bottom. We are. All right, so I'm gonna lift up this stencil and then I'm gonna do a little bit of blending just to have some color on the background. Ooh, that's pretty. So I'm gonna take my blue blender brush that still has a little bit of color on it and just come in from the side. I just want to have a little bit of color coming in around that. And I'll take my green blender brush, whatever green's left on it. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of my lightest green ink. I'm going to blend it on that masking paper off to the side. And then I'll come in here and just get a little bit of that going up here at the top. All right, so now we've got this, this half of the envelope that is completely free so that I can put uh, her address there over on the side. So we're keeping this really simple today. Terry's asking, who makes the best blending brushes? You know what? The best blending brush is the one that you have in your stash. I think most of them are pretty comparable to each other. So I don't think you can go wrong wherever you can find your blending brushes. Um, I find that the Simon ones are really great, but really it's whatever ones that you love. I, that's where I'm at. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have a more concise answer for you. All right. So when it comes to adhering stamps, like old vintage ones, I really don't like to lick them. <laughs> I think it's kind of gross. So generally what I do is I'll spray a paper towel and then like press the stamp into it. All right, so I'm going to grab some paper towel. You can even use a rag. I'm going to spray it with my spray bottle. And then I can just press the stamp into that when it gets it nice and sticky. And come right in on the stand. Okay, I just needed that there. So then I can grab Oscar. And he's going to go right there. And then I can grab this last one. Who is this? Washington Irving. And 
This one looks really, really old. Sometimes they leave like stains on the paper towel. And also sometimes they don't want to stick. So if they don't stick, just use like a glue stick or any other adhesive to get those sticking down. that's there I can grab an eraser and really lightly erase those pencil lines all right so to assemble the envelope I like to use a really really strong adhesive I really like um, either score tape or express it tape anything like that and I'll also use it when I actually close up the envelope like right before I mail it off, I'll do that as well. So I'm going to put the adhesive. I put it, this is how I do it. Other people do it other ways, but I do it, you know, I put a strip till there's about maybe a little more than an inch left on the bottom flap. And I always leave, I don't go all the way to the edge, to the corner. I, I stop because um, sometimes people need a way to open the envelope and if you've sealed up every single edge they're not gonna have anywhere to get their envelope um, opener underneath okay so then I fold in the two side flaps and use a bone folder really get those sides down and then just fold up the bottom and see this is why you want to keep the adhesive away from the tip because it is going to overlap. And I'll just kind of press down and kind of make sure I seal those really well. And then we have our envelope. That was a really simple envelope, just a little bit of stenciling. You could do that with any stencil you've got in your stash. Yeah, I'm gonna need to, I'm just checking the inks on the Simon stuff. I will need to put micro glaze on it because it is water reactive ink. So if, it, if this was to get wet, it would start to bleed. Simon's other inks, like their original inks, are actually waterproof. So if I would have done that um, with Simon's original inks, I wouldn't need to glaze it necessarily. But um, because I use this water reactive ink, I would need to glaze it. So um, just to take it to the very last step here, I'll just show you this. Um, I used uh, Tim Holtz My uh, Distress Micro Glaze. And what this is, is like, it's almost like the consistency of like a chapstick. And you just put a really thin coat of it over your envelope. So like so. I like to put some paper down or uh, in this case, a paper towel, just because I'm going to blend off the edge. You can apply it with your fingertips or a brush or anything you like. I use a mini round blending tool because it fits right inside and I can just like twist it down in there and it's perfect. So 
I'm going to start up here. I'm avoiding the postage stamps because once you put this like coating on, it repels everything on top of it, which is why it's a great protective um, medium for, you know, like to what protect your stuff from water. So they can't cancel the stamps. They can't do anything. So um, if it, if you can avoid um, the postage stamps, that's best. And also try to avoid this area down here at the bottom. If you've ever gotten mail and it's got like the, the bar code printed at the bottom, um, sometimes they'll just go ahead and try to print it. Other times they'll do a sticker and the sticker will come right off if you put this on it. So if you can avoid putting it down here, I'm going to have to because the blue comes to over to this point, but okay. I've got a little bit of micro glaze on here. I'm just going to start and I'm just going to start blending that right on top. And you don't have to worry about it um, kind of smearing or smudging your ink. I've, I mean, I've never had a problem where it's like visible, you know, that it's like a, a big issue. The most you're going to get is maybe you might have a little bit of ink transfer like I do. I have a little bit of ink transfer on my thing, but it's not going to ruin your project at all whatsoever. All right. So I protected the areas I need to protect. The black pen I used was waterproof, so I don't have to go over that. But then you can take your paper towel that you've been using, and you're going to wipe any excess off the edges. And then all you do is kind of buff that glaze into the paper. You want it to really penetrate the paper. Okay. And then it's going to have a little bit of a sheen to it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in this light here or not. It's going to have a little bit of a sheen to it and almost look wet. <clears throat> Uh, over the next day, it'll dry back and it'll lose that and then it won't have any issues. So there's the envelope for today. I hope you guys enjoyed and got some good tips on creating a really simple envelope for your own mail art. And um, I will be back very soon with more videos. In fact, I've got a couple of videos that are going to go up this weekend. And, and then I've got, seriously, this is going on forever, but I've got two more videos <laughs> from Hawaii. They're edited. I just had to do voiceovers. I was waiting until I was feeling better. I feel like so much better. I'm no longer sick or on my deathbed. It was, it was, it was crazy there for a while. That cold really hit me hard, but I'm feeling lots better now. So I should get to those, uh, videos very soon. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys another video very soon.